Alright, here we go. Slate. Good evening and welcome to Riveting Conversations, <clears throat> the only recap show for the best audio drama in the interwebs. Yes. Woo. Rex Riveter, Private Eye. My name is Joe. I am your host every single, or no, not every single Monday, every other Monday night when we record this. And with me on the couch, uh, this is going to be a fun episode. We have Mr. Rex Riveter himself, Randy Cool. Hello. And of course, the, uh, the... To think of something. Aggravator in chief, <laughs> uh, Greg McAfee. You're right? your writer. Hi. Well, I'm not. I'm not your writer. Well, no. You. 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 No. You couldn't write for me. You're not. Wow. You're not homosexual enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's already. We're already there. Everybody. We are. That escalated quickly. Like, yes. <laughs> So let's let's try to st- let's try as hard as possible to stay on topic. <laughs> yes, let's try. For every ten, ta- everyone, possible. let's. I'm I'm gonna put ask you to put this episode on pause and go proceed to your liquor cabinet to go get your favorite <laughs> bottle of alcohol. Mm. And every time we go on tangent or we start riffing, wow. you should take a shot. Wow, You're right. I promise you, it's gonna be fun. Yes, St. Patrick's Day is coming up. So exactly. That'll be, uh, so that'll be. Right. Yeah. Like, so. The time is St. Patrick's Day is over. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, it's, oh, it's already all yeah, right. Well, 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 damn it. Kill for the afternoon. Oh. <laughs> so Start here we go. So this episode, um, I will say my first beef with this episode is you did not. I'm I'm talking to you because I, I wish I could talk to you every single time, um, at, on one of these things and basically tell you what I think of you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, Joe, I know what you think. <laughs> Um, I'm well aware. You did not specify what happened to the construction guy, to the guy that... Sullivan. Sullivan, yes. You did not specify what happened to Sullivan at the end of... At the beginning of this episode. Well, for for the listening audience, I will clear that up right now, once and for all, so that there is no misunderstanding. I got nothing. uh... (laughs) He's He's dead. He's dead. He was shot. He's and dead the way like Jon Snow is dead, or the no. way that like, or the way like Jenny is dead, or whatever. Like Jenny's dead the way Jon Snow is dead. Let's just like, let's just, let's just you know. Oh, okay. Rex, call Rex it what Riveter it is. shot him and killed him. Yeah, okay. Rex Riveter shot an unarmed man. Yes. And killed him. Yes. Okay. And and that's and that's kind of why he's in self-destruct mode, going back to old dames. Old it dames. looks like. Well, you know, it's it's interesting when when I first read this script and the way you know Greg and Rian and uh, presented it to me is that you know Rex goes to listen to Alice slash Lila. You know, she was his first case basically, and and she was his first success, and so he goes so he goes there uh, when he is feeling down, lost. Uh, whatever, you know, to a remind himself that this is one thing. Here's a physical representation of one thing he did right, and that he got right, and he that that worked. You got, you've got this, um, <clears throat> you've got this this whole scene in the desert where he is buried alive, and where as as you said uh, two weeks ago, the force ghost of uh, yes, <laughs> the force ghost yes, yes. Uh, you have force ghosts of Jenny yeah, and, and 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 Abe, and and they're telling him like Abe is telling him, hey, you haven't done anything right, you've never saved anyone, and so uh, a- after the events of the desert and after the events in uh, at Saint Viviana, he has uh, I think that Rex has to. Um, he's got to he's got to check in somewhere where something went right, yeah. Uh, and so that's that is his go to place, is uh, going to uh, going to see Lily, mm-hmm. Lila. Who plays Lila? Are you ever going to get any of the characters' names right? And while there, he bumps into Mallory. Yes. yes. <laughs> Mrs. Garrett walks in. Right. right yeah. yes. <laughs> girls. 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 Yeah. Rex. Rex. Sorry. Oh, my favorite was always Tootie. Okay, so Joe, Joe, yeah. Oh, Joe, yeah. Yeah. I, Joe, yeah. Joe. Yeah. What was it? What was I it? hope you're all drinking at this what, point. What was it? Yeah. <laughs> drink and drink. Yeah. What, what was it? What was the the blonde girl? The the kind of high, you know, the Blair. Oh, Blair. 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 Yes. Hated Blair. Blair. Yeah. 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 And, and sometimes even for me, uh, Natalie. 
And uh, for, for me, it was um, Samantha, not Jeannie. So there, and there you go. So Samantha, not yes. Jeannie? Yes, yeah, I never liked Jeannie. Oh, uh, and <laughs> Mallory Keaton. That was out of the... Sha-la-la-la. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you have the entire bottle. <laughs> so anyway, back uh, back to you. So Lou, who plays Lou? Oh, uh, Daniel Navoa, right? Yes. Yeah. I I really liked I really liked him. Yes, Lou was really great. I was yes. like, oh, like I was trying to like discern dialect. I'm like, is this a is he Latino? I'm like, do I hear Latino? He he is. Uh, okay. And and yeah, and, is and, he written that way? Uh, he, no, no, he was not. But but when he came in an audition and we were and we were listening to him and Rhiannon was asking me who you know who do we want to cast, uh, and and I think it was her suggestion. Uh, and I'm like, I, I like that because here is a here is a a business owner in 1955 in Los Angeles. Absolutely, I I, I want to have I want to be as inclusive as we possibly can be mm-hmm. um, for 1955. For 1955, yeah. And and that's and that is one of the things that that as a writer that sometimes I feel restrained by is that I've got to keep things um, in keep them separated. Yeah, yeah, got to keep them separated. Uh, I've got to keep things uh, as uh, as true to the time as I can. Um, and so, you, for instance, you notice that in in season one there was a lot of slapping of of women and stuff, and and I was not crazy about that. And so, uh, <laughs> and then came along um, Levi Levi who who corrected uh, Rex's behavior, which I liked. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I, I I had problems I with that, and then. Um, but I think it. I think that you're. You know, it's always a problem about representation and inclusivity when it comes to things of period times. But I, I think that you're doing a great job because Rex and this, the subject matter and the characters of this, of this particular universe, they're all, um, they're all people who are either on the fringe of society mm-hmm. or they're in like an underworld where like. You have uh, Max. You have Maxine, who mm-hmm. is a madam, who you know is a female, mm-hmm. strong female, no autonomy over your body, sex worker. Uh, but she, you know, she's not like out there. You're not gonna have that. Um, you're not gonna have. It's hard to have that kind of representation mainstream mm-hmm. of the time. So like yes. we're. You know, it's interesting because you're thinking about, we're thinking about, like, what is the mainstream textbook 1950s look like? But then we also have to consider, like, no, like, this is the, this is the same period where, like, you know, just 20 years prior, you have uh, the war, the feud between Helena Rubinstein and uh, Elizabeth Arden, who are two female, Mm -hmm. like, you know, two female um, millionaires who run their entire companies, right. but that's not something that people talk about. Right, right, yeah, and and that was that was the um, that was the typically the exception, not the rule. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and and I like the fact you're right because you're pointing out that this these these are folks. Pretty much all of these characters are folks that are living on the fringe. None of them have a typical nine to five type of job. You know, it, one of the only people that actually had a nine to five job uh, was Opie Hadlock's character, Mr. Bennett, who yeah. was you know he was insur- and you know and he was intentionally kind of as boring as you could possibly be. Yeah, um, yeah. Which Opie did a fantastic job. Not that Opie <coughs> is boring, but but his his uh, portrayal was fantastic. So uh, so anyway, that's my that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay. Well, I I really liked I really liked um the surprise of like, oh, he's I mean, again, this is I'm like you're audibly Latino and <laughs> I know I don't know, you can cut that's, that. Down. That's the name of my next you, band. Audibly, audibly Latino. Latino. <laughs> Hi everyone. My name is Greg McPhee and we're audibly Latino. Thank you very much. We're audibly Latino. Good night. <laughs> he says in a... Yeah, in a in British, 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 British. Right. <laughs> Well, see that—that's the joke. See, it's, yeah, you know, you'll be like, you'll be like that uh, rock band from Brooklyn, the Sans Culottes, where they sing every song in French, but they don't speak French. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, you'll just, you'll just right. do that. Or ABBA. See, I feel like I feel like James Lipton, where Drink. I pull out these, right. I pull out these references from uh-huh. now. I just referenced Elizabeth Arden and Helena Rubinstein. Right. Yeah. Did any was anyone gonna comment on that? I'm like, oh, you know, like Elizabeth Arden, Helena Rubinstein. And we're all like sitting here going, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Sadly, uh, you can't see us. Just not our head and smile. Yeah. Uh huh. So I was like, okay, well, you know, let me just I'm gonna take my pedant off. I'm gonna put it off. And I also love, uh, you know, 
Daniel did a great job as yes. Luke, but I also loved, and this was not in the script originally, but the whole when the whole talking about the uh, guy down at oh, the yeah. end of the bar, yeah, yeah. yeah, and and you can hear Dave, Dave Revis, Dave Revis adding in, hey, Ross, hey, there. <laughs> Hey, my Tanner. Yeah. Can I get uh, another drink? Yeah. You know, whistling. <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. Well, oh, I, 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 funny you should bring that up because as I'm listening to this, I'm like, oh god, is this like a Chekhov's gun thing? Are we gonna have? Is this guy gonna come back again? <laughs> like, I'm like, this guy's gonna come back and fuck shit up somewhere. He's, I, right. It, it's actually Angela Martin, but you know, you just can't. Right. You yes, just can't, you can't. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about the band because you had mm-hmm. you had like a little trio or yes. a, yeah. a, is a trio yes. uh, Don Oluwa trio yes. yes you had a little trio because mm-hmm. um, she was the voice of Lila yes uh, so talk a little bit about that what was it like how did you you know record them and what was that all process like getting the band in <clears throat> um, well I'll, I'll, I'm gonna back up a little bit it has you're white you shouldn't do that I know uh... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I see Greg twerk. <laughs> <laughs> that is never gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, How did you make it happen? No. Anyway, <laughs> so as as the writer, I, I always um, I always wanted to have. There are some things that I always wanted to have in Rex, and one of them is I always wanted to have a boxer because you know that is such a um, that is such a. Uh, uh, a noir kind of thing is you got a guy who's an who's an old boxer and then another thing is I always wanted to have some kind of you know I always wanted to have a um, uh, kind of a torch singer I always thought that would be kind of cool and as far as recording that particular part we actually we left that I think that that is something that Dawn brought to Dave mm-hmm. mm. and uh, recording that for uh, something that she was actually going to uh, that is I think that is part of her uh, part of her tape. And so she brought that to Dave, and Dave kind of mastered that, remastered that, so to make it sound like it was in a, uh, you know, in a in a tiny little nightclub. Well, and I think I think it was just <clears throat> Providence because uh, Don, uh, she showed up to the first round of auditions, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. And, yep. and for this was, season, yes. for this season, yes. for the second season, and when she showed up, she she put on her audition form that she was a singer in a mm-hmm. jazz group and and my, my, my eyes lit up yeah yeah when because i was here facilitating the, the auditions i was out i was the greeter and uh did they know you were rex uh some <laughs> some, some, people. some people did yeah. uh <laughs> others were like oh hi yeah <laughs> they, yeah so uh, which was really uh because because randy kept saying hi randy cool like hi randy, randy cool <laughs> uh and yeah and then, and then when they I, if I saw a spark of recognition, I was I was like, okay, good. And then I go in <laughs> and I put a little star, star on there. there. Yeah. The <laughs> and then I'd bring it in. Oh, like, you listen, good. Yes. The others, it was like I'd bring them in. I'm like, Pfft. well, see, that's <laughs> that's that's <laughs> awesome because you you automatically know who who's like. Have you listened to the show? Oh yeah, it does. Yeah. Well, you know that was Rex Riveter right there. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh oh, I had no idea. Yeah. <laughs> Rex who? Rex. Right. But, um, Who's that? But she showed... She she put on her audition form that she was a singer. And, and yeah, both Rhiannon and Greg kind of perked mm-hmm. up at that. Yeah. And then, uh, I guess after her audition, they asked her to sing, mm-hmm. and, and she just kind of uh, belted out something. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and uh, Greg played that for me right after she left, and I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, we have to have her sing. Yeah. Which, which, by the way, I'm, I'm interrupting. But, uh, if you'd like to hear that, we are actually putting together a best of uh, clips from the auditions. Ooh. Because there were a lot of things that happened in our auditions that were fabulous. Um, James Steinberg's James, audition. James Steinberg's audition. <gasps> um, that, the... Mrs. Frizzle. Oh, God. oh yes. Yeah. Um, but the, that will be available to our Patreon subscribers. So along with the gag reels from each case the best of from the auditions and other fun perks if you go to www.patreon.com slash Rex Riveter and become a patron, you will get access to those fun things. For a, for a small amount of $10,000. No. <clears throat> yes. Or, Randy will come and do your laundry for you. <laughs> he'll pick it up. He'll fluff and fold. He'll pick it up. I'll, I'll probably he'll do it at the McAfee's house. Right. Yes. And he'll bring it back. Just send us your laundry and, <clears throat> and I'll do it. Uh, so so yeah that's how how yeah. we got done yeah and 
Very cool. But yeah. she was she was just gonna be a, a singer. Mm-hmm. We when we when we ca- sorry I'm interrupting. Um, when we when we cast her. <laughs> it's okay. Why? Yeah. Why? We're yeah, surprise yeah, guests. We're joined by oh, by oh, you're on the couch director now. and producer awesome. Rhiannon and McAfee. Woo! Um, when we when we first uh, cast Dawn, she was just going to be a singer. We were going to have her be a small part, and she was going to be the singer that, that Greg had talked about. And then when he started writing her, she just totally, as as Greg's characters often do, took on a complete life of her own and became, you know, one of the main characters in this story, um, mm-hmm. which was, and it worked out really, really well. And, and Dawn is, is a lovely person. Hi, and now the dog's on the couch. <laughs> Um, she's a lovely person she, and and very talented, and it was and, and I and I I personally I love the character of Lila. She's one of my oh, favorite she characters. is. I love Lila. I, I you know right after we listened to the episode, my my mom called and I went and talked to her a little bit. Aww. And well, this has now become the tradition. <laughs> right. Post Rex, do you want to shout her out? Yeah, hi mom. I mean, she's also one of our Patreon su- uh, supporters. Wonderful. Randy uh, will come to your house and do your laundry. <laughs> Which should no, be a nice change. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so it will probably be very nice. But yeah, it's it's become a thing now where she calls me after after each episode and and uh, and just tells me you know, debrief you. And, yeah, yeah. She, but she was she wasn't too happy. Oh. She wasn't too happy with this episode. Oh, really? oh what did she say? Oh, because oh. she's like, well, I just I just don't. This is my mom. Okay. I just, I, I just don't understand this. This is very out of character for Rex. That, that, who's this woman? <laughs> and, and this is he's still mourning Jenny. And so she's wow. very, very, uh, very. Uh, she thinks you're betraying Jenny. Yeah, she thinks he's betraying and the, I'm, Jenny's like, memory. Here. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I had to go. Well, mom, Jenny's memory. She's still alive. Whatever. <laughs> so I'm trying to make that happen. I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she was. Uh, she, so she's she's not happy with the fact that Lila is hitting on uh, Rex, right? Because yeah. because it is it is fairly one sided. It, it is. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I had to point out to her. I had to go, well, mom, you, you, you got to listen to it again because, you know, you know Rex Rex's intentions are are, you know, and I I, I don't think Lila is hitting on with Rex with any real intention of of it being reciprocated, mm-hmm. but. It's her persona. Uh, yeah, it's it's just her persona, and and obviously Rex is not <clears throat> Rex is not there for a hookup, right? You know, he's there for yeah. He so he's going to so swipe left. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, is that what it is? Yeah, no, it, swipe left. Yes. It was funny because you said mm-hmm. swipe left, but you swiped right. <laughs> like you like actually, I was like it was left to me, but it was right to you. Right. So <laughs> wow. Uh, just right but yeah, wrong. she. This is not Can sponsored you, by Tinder. Do, do actors swipe stage left? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yes, yes, I mean, actors swipe. Drink, <laughs> drink, <laughs> drink. Very nice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that was that was the one thing my mom's nice. not too happy nice. about. Hi, hi, mom. Did you get that from Jim Steinberg? Did he just text you that he's like, oh. <laughs> no, but that was that was very Steinbergian. Yes, it was very Steinbergian. Very Steinbergian. Uh, so yeah, she was. So let me ask you this: Does your mom believe, like many others do, that Jenny is still alive? <sighs> yes, my mom shares the belief that Jenny is not wonderful. Dead. One of those hashtag Jenny truthers. <laughs> yeah, Jenny okay. truthers. Jenny truthers. Jenny truthers. Well, I have Jenny a. Truthers. I actually have a coworker. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have several. Yeah, I have several coworkers. I heard you have a lot. I, I do. I do actually have many, many coworkers, many yeah. much coworkers. Uh, but there's a, a bigly a, amount. Yeah, a good bigly, <laughs> bigly. Um, I, I, and several of them listen to the show. Uh, go on. And uh, and not a one of them. They they all come to me for various, and they just cannot accept Jenny's stuff. I like the uh, the. Because I, I don't think you, I don't think you've said this on mic before, but the story you were telling about after uh, the last episode two weeks ago, when we heard Jenny's voice, Force Ghost voice, <laughs> and and somebody, uh, I guess somebody had not. Yeah. So they. So Tuesday morning, I go into the office and uh, and I, I and there's two coworkers that sit next to each other and listen to the show, and I, I go in and. And I, I said uh, to one of them, I said, hey, 
one of them actually said, hey, the show was great last night. I'm like, hey, thank you, thank you. And I said, hey, Norman, uh, did you listen to the show yet? And he's like, no. I'm like, boy, it was sure good to hear Jenny's voice again. Right. <laughs> And he, he was he had actually said, No, I'm I'm downloading it on my phone right now. I'm like, Well, it was sure good to hear Jenny's voice again. And he's like, What? And he runs to his computer and he starts typing because I guess he was gonna listen to it on his computer. And then I just walked away going, <laughs> You're such a dick. I am. I am. And then the 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 update on that particular story is then he uh I am me about a little while later, he goes, asshole. <laughs> No, so yeah. so so uh, so Randy's mom uh, is also a uh, a Jenny Truther. Jenny Truther, yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna look like a genius. I'm gonna look like a fucking genius when this all at the end of this year, <laughs> or we're, we're done, or, or or I'm gonna look like an asshole. I'm gonna look like an but idiot. If, but if you if you think she's still alive, what do you think? Where is she? Yeah, I've already said this. Yeah, if anyone yes, who, I, all of the people who've listened to this, they know that she's been working for the government in right, some capacity. Right. Secret, oh, that's right. That's right. You why is it so many people have a tribute? Like, uh, I, I know one person who believes that Jenny is actually like much higher connected than like like she's a mastermind of some kind oh wow. oh she's like a villain yeah Ooh, and, and she's, i like that that's, that's yeah. interesting and, oh, she, and yet and yet she's working for teeny R- tiny little R- rex riveter the wall rex riveter yeah right yeah that seems well you know it is cover like, that's a long con you know what i'm saying well it it, it would oh, <laughs> oh I see what you did there. it yeah. wouldn't yeah. Yeah. and that's that's kind of what he believes is that she was huh. uh you know that she's pulling some kind of long con on rex wow. well, she's like well, steering Rex towards these cases that she needs to have cleaned up or something. I see. So it, yeah, it was. Uh, it was Wait, very so she's she's like red from the blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> Drink. <laughs> there we go. Yes. Now all we need is Jenny to tell these spoilers for the blacklist. Yes, it's the one the of, You know when I was a girl, when I was, yeah. <laughs> when I was five years old. Right. There was this little Jimmy Tomlinson. <laughs> that is a great. That was a really good. <laughs> Not now, now say you're gonna take these nuclear coats. You're gonna, or you're gonna take these nuclear coats. What's his um? What's his uh? His manservant Uba Baba Tunde. Dembe. I'm like Uba Baba. No, Uba Baba Tunde is a. He's he's a Broadway dancer. He was, oh, he's a, oh, oh, oh! He's okay. a Broadway dancer. I, I thought Oba Baba Tunde. Star Wars. Dembe yeah. is Dembe. drink. Dembe. By the way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he totally got out. Dembe. Okay. Go, go get another you. bottle. Uh, because there's more to come. Dikembe yeah. Matambo. Oh, I do too. De- uh, De- well, Shawedal is your for. He's so, he's so yes, you, you are. <laughs> you were well rounded. Watched Joe. It the other night, and we turned it. We made it into a. We okay. I guess I'm telling this story. You're now. telling this story. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> stop, and I'm telling. I was telling this to Rihanna, but my girlfriend and I have turned uh, watching the blacklist into a drinking game. Huh. Uh, <laughs> weird. Uh, and so we, so like. Uh, <laughs> We start out with the first rule being uh, whenever Red starts telling a, a story, an anecdotal We'd story, love love you have story. to drink during the entire story. <laughs> God. <laughs> we very quickly changed so, that yeah, rule. So three minutes in, you're like, because <laughs> yeah, yeah. Randy, Randy here, if you, if oh. you know Randy, Randy, Randy has the alcohol tolerance of like a toddler. Right. Yes. <laughs> It's amazing. You, he like smells alcohol in the room and, and he I'm, gets this laugh. He has a drunk laugh that is the most amazing thing yes. you've ever heard. We'll get him drunk on on oh, on no. my. Yes, we, we should. Yeah. Yes. Oh, you know what? We'll do it at uh, end of the season. End of the season. We'll, get, the we'll season. get Randy drunk on mic. Yeah. Yes, but that will be an episode only available to our Patreon yes, subscribers. Yes. So yes. Yes. And, and make sure twenty one or over. I'm sure your mom's all over that. Like, yeah. yeah. Oh! <laughs> I've heard this laugh before. I don't know why. I don't know why I weighed your mom, the chicken lady from Kids in the Hall. Drink, drink. Yes. <laughs> so, Rex Riveter. Of course, all, all, yeah. all the ladies out there are now like, "Oh, he's a girl." I know it's it. Oh, he's taken. Oh, he's yeah. taken. He's taken. I am taken. Yes. Oh, shucks. Well, she's seriously taken. He doesn't spend any time in our basement anymore. I know. I know. He, he never comes over. Where do you do your laundry now? Uh, I just... she does it for him. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know. <laughs> do you send no, it out? He does it for her. Right. He's a, I, he's a I actually I actually do do our laundry. Aww. Most of the time. Aww. Cause, cause he's really Bless nice. it. All right. So one editing thing that I really enjoyed and I enjoy I, I mean I can't I can't gush about how great the editing and the sound mixing and all of that from 
Dave is. But the one thing that I really liked was as he's remembering Jenny, mm-hmm. the um, Jenny's theme is playing mm-hmm. in like oh, yeah. the distance. And I'm just like, ah, I loved it. Kills me every time he does that. Yeah. Yeah. Every time you hear. Yeah. And no offense, I do like Jenny's theme better than Nightmare. Uh, you're supposed to. <laughs> Okay. What's what's the name? It's softly <laughs> on a softly like a morning sunrise. Yes. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece. It is. Mm-hmm. It's and yeah, I love it. Every time you hear it come in, mm-hmm. you hear that piece come in. It's like it, it's it's genius because yeah. you, it immediately just lends itself to help you understand. Okay, he's thinking of Jenny mm-hmm. right now, mm-hmm. and and it just helps to. To emphasize, yeah, uh, Rex's state of mind because it's a, it's you know, like you said, it, what's it called? Softly, like a morning sunrise, like morning sunrise. So you know that it's a little bit of light that's yeah. coming in because he's you know so dark. He's still introducing himself as a bum, which yeah. I thought was very, very interesting and very. Greg, let, very me, Greg let me pick my theme. Yes. Oh, he did. He he, he sent me because he sent me several of like four or five different songs that we we had the rights to mm-hmm. um, from the catalog. Um, and let me and let me pick that one. And the second I heard that one, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is this is Jenny's theme right here." Yeah, because it's up, it's peppy, it's it is, it's very, uh, it's very light as opposed to Rex's song, you know. which is intentionally. Ah! Yeah, it is very. Uh, I mean, the song is called Nightmare, so yeah. it is it is very dark and it is very heavy. You know, there is an avenged sevenfold song called Nightmare that's not as fun, but it's a really good song for karaoke. By the way, drink, 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 <laughs> drink. Um. um Hold on. So Jenny, right? So Jenny's still alive. Dead. Um, dead. Hashtag dead Jenny. <laughs> Hashtag Jenny truthers. <laughs> okay. So Jenny's still alive. And the reason why I, I'm going about, and you, I want to answer your question about why I think Jenny's still alive and where uh-huh. she's been this entire yeah. time. Well, as the entire, if you take into account the entire first season and you have like Jenny's episode and then things that Jenny said, especially when Antoinette comes in, there is... There's like a lot of stuff that she's being mysterious about. There's a lot, a lot of stuff that she's being very mysterious about. Um, that you know, Rex has his demons, but we're learning all about him because it's, you know the entire story is from his perspective. But she has things she's mysterious about, things she doesn't talk about. She just kind of shows up. She's the one who basically helps Riveter, riveting, uh, you know, Riveter investigations get off the ground, which kind of lends itself to your friends. Uh, theory about jenny being some sort of master mind you know red from yeah. blacklist master manipulator um but more than that she's got you know she has she has an, a husband who she has her his last name right that's macintosh that's where it comes from mm-hmm. and that is someone that she doesn't talk about also and it's macintosh which is irish and you've been you already have a um you've already you know broke the seal on the mob so you have italians and you have the irish there so i'm sure that she's involved in some way shape or form mm. i'm sure her husband was dead but he's not really dead he's alive and then so so not only is jenny not dead but her husband who we have never met and who's only been referenced once <clears throat> is also not dead yes exactly now what about okay so uh what about going back to first season first case i believe mm. uh um, farmer's wife farmer's wife uh, Stanley. Oh, oh yes. Stanley, right? Oh, the boyfriend? The Jenny, boyfriend. Jenny's boyfriend. Oh, Jenny's boyfriend. that's probably her handler. <laughs> <laughs> yes. well, you know how he travels a lot. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Occam's razor, you know? Yeah. It's just... <laughs> the, the simplest explanation. The simplest explanation yeah. is a handler. Yeah. Okay. Because if you think about it, every single time there's been someone that's their boyfriend, it ends up being their handler. Yeah. 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 Didn't you watch Leverage? Let's, yeah. <laughs> yes. And Alias and wow. Drink. 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 Yes. Yes. Um How many how many shows can we reference in one episode? I know. Oh my god. god. I was not expecting Blacklist. I was like, "Oh shit, Blacklist. Here we go." Right. Uh, Buffy really, the, Buffy really the you were you, were, just, uh, you did just... Facts of Life, but yeah, you, weren't yeah, expecting yeah, you weren't expecting No, the I was like, "Oh, right the <laughs> Yes, but twenty twentieth anniversary yes. of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which which I started watching with my nine year old son. Oh, and he, and awesome. he loves it because we because I'm a nerd and I have all every single season on DVD. Mm. <laughs> so what? we started. We start, That's surprising. I know. So we started. We started watching it, and he loves it. That's mm. awesome. Lovely. <clears throat> so in summation, <laughs> to wrap it all up, um, the so obviously like 
we have Lila who is just like pushing forcing the issue she's just like nothing's wrong rex is gonna help here like i just thought it was so jarring to have her like basically break and enter into <laughs> rex's home and it was like oh you it's like here i'm in your home i'm making you coffee i'm like what is at going four o'clock in the morning at four o'clock in the morning and then her boyfriend comes in and is like what is going jimmy, on johnny, here johnny jimmy jimmy johnny <laughs> handsome johnny this is jimmy jimmy sloan yes, jimmy, jimmy sloan um portrayed wonderfully by uh Tom Stewart. 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 Yes, very, very. I just like, oh wow, they, what did they, did they cast someone straight from Ireland to do this? He's, he's actually, he is British. Mm-hmm. Oh, wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. But he's not, he's not Irish. But his, his dialect is, is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was another thing where, um, he came to the audition and it was on his, uh, on his audition sheet that he did several dialects and so Rhiannon had his sheet and, uh, and she's like, well, can you do this one? Can you do that one? And, uh, and he did his Irish and that was immediately because one of the, um. Oh, uh, we knew he was that. We knew yeah, he was the boxer as yeah. soon as he walked out yeah. out the door. Yeah, he was he was cast be- before he before we left the property. Yeah, we didn't tell him that, but no. mm-hmm. <laughs> but as he as he was walking mm-hmm. as he was walking out the door, we were both like boxer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I just love how it's now it's coming. Oh, like okay, so long con. Like oh, so now we bring it all back to handsome Johnny, and hopefully, like this next episode that comes out mm-hmm. um, in next week is just going to be. I think it's going to be really great because I think we're also getting the appearance of Ruby Rose too, right? In this Ruby Rose, Ruby Rose, right? It's Ruby, but it's not Rose. No, oh. I'm thinking of someone else. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Cut this wait. Out. <laughs> Ruby Rose, Kristen's chant, Kristen's, Kristen's character, character. Kristen's yeah. character yeah. is Ruby. Yeah, yeah. It's Ruby, but not Ruby Rose. But okay. Ruby is, um, yes. wow. I'm she's a so, bad lady. She's Catwoman. I am, I am yeah, so I'm is. so excited for Ruby to show yeah. up because she's oh, yeah. she's my favorite. And Kristen Chandler did mm. such an amazing job with Ruby and and <clears throat> and was and was one of our one take wonders. She was yeah. She, yeah she really she just was. came into the studio and just blew it out of the park and we were like and thank you and goodbye because you're amazing. One of the one of the challenges uh, for for writing anyway is that again in this <laughs> in this. In this time period, um, so much was was happening. There were a lot of the noir. Uh, basically, women had three parts. You know, they were either a secretary or they were the um, you know the femme fatale, um, or some matronly woman. And and there are at most auditions there are tons and tons of women and not that many men that that, mm-hmm. that show up. And so, um, one of the challenges for me is trying to use as many women as possible and so in this in this uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> phrasing I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna redo that later uh, so part of part of the challenge was trying to make use of so many women um, nope still didn't sound good nope better uh, but no. not, not uh, the best no. and, and no. so in this in this particular case we got you know we have we have Lila uh, who uh, again Dawn does a, a fantastic job and then and then we have uh, Ruby who uh, Kristen, it just her voice is just absolutely perfect, and her her take on the character is just absolutely am- mm-hmm. amazing. So, um, so yeah, well, I, I think after her audition, the the oh. when I again I was facilitating. I think she was here during the first round of auditions, mm-hmm. and uh, I was outside when she auditioned. But as soon as she left, I came inside, and they're like, "She's going to be a." dangerous lady i'm yeah. like ooh, okay and when i when i because we hadn't written her part yet but when i when i offered her the role uh, what i told her was i said i don't know who you're going to be yet but there is going to be a very very dangerous woman that is a recurring character throughout the series the most dangerous woman that that rex has ever met and that will be you right so. i can't think of a better place to leave it huh. so i think we're just going to leave it there because Everyone should definitely listen to the parents of Ruby next week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So thank you once again, everybody, for listening to Riveting Conversations. Um, once again, Patreon, it's how you know we're able to keep everything, keep the lights on. So please make sure to go subscribe to Patreon. As Rhiannon had mentioned, there's some really great stuff coming down. Mm-hmm the pipeline for all of our Patreon subscribers. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And also, if you do subscribe to Patreon, um, there's different levels. And one of those levels, we will actually, you'll be able to tune into the live feed of Riveting Conversations when it's actually taped and get to ask your questions to the yes. people who were on the couch. Exactly. As we're taping the show. Which would, which is a huge help for me because then I don't have to make everything up. <laughs> and you can keep us on, you can, you can keep us on, uh, on track. Uh, that'll actually be the real benefit of what right. we're, what we're having the fans <laughs> watch. Um, anything... Anything that you want to promote besides uh, besides Rex? Besides anything that you're doing right now that people oh. can find you in the city? Yes. Yeah, uh, I'm in a uh, I'm in a show that's going to open this coming week. It's it's uh, next Friday, the twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fourth. Thanks, Joe. It's it's a play. Thank you, Joe. Uh, it's called Who Am I This Time? It's a uh, it's a show. Uh, where they took uh, three of Kurt Vonnegut's short stories and interwove them together into one full-length play. Um, and who do you play? Well, I play a character named Harry Nash. Yes. <laughs> uh, it, well, actually, I play several characters, but uh, the main character I play is this guy named Harry Nash who's a, a incredibly introverted and shy, uh, but also is uh, a, a very good actor, and he gets to play uh, Stanley Kowalski from Streetcar Named Desire. Yeah. Wonderful. So I get to do a little bit of all that. Um, and where can where can where can someone purchase tickets to this that, amazing show? That is with a group called Vanguard Theater. Uh, I believe their uh, website is vanguardsd.com org, org. edu. Org. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> gov. Yeah. gov. Yeah. They're they're in Point Loma, California. So you know. If you're in San Diego, definitely you're in go San see Diego. It. Go see, please, really cool. please go and see that. It's a, uh, it's a fun show. It, the full title is "Who Am I This Time and Other Conundrums of Love." It's a, it's a show all about love and, and stuff like that. It's very cool. Yeah. And I am, uh, I am in a production of Jane Austen's Emma, mm-hmm. uh, in Escondido at the Grand Tea Shop. Uh, that, that opens runs... this Friday, right? Uh, yes, yes, it does, and it runs through um, April 9th. Um, yes. And it's a hot ticket. So it, is, it is a hot it, ticket. It is a hot uh, ticket. Shows are actually almost completely sold out for the entire run. There are some stick- tickets available, I think, for some Fridays and maybe a couple of Saturdays, uh, but you can get tickets to that uh, at the 413project.org, which is the name of the theater company. So if you'd like to see me... Um, with nope. funny Regency era hair, wearing a corset and speaking in a funny dialect, and, and also, uh, and and don't don't you have tea also? Is it, because it's, a, it's a, oh it's, yes, it is it's, a it's, it is a dinner theater of sorts, except that instead of dinner, you will be served high tea. It's actually in a tea shop, and you get high tea right. high and tea some Jane Austen. Jane Austen. Nice. And they, I, and I, I actually have my tickets for opening night. Mm-hmm. Uh, Stephanie and I will be there. So nice. Uh, so looking forward to that, but yeah, it's, I, you know, so the high tea service. So what is it? It's like, like you start off with your, your first course and then every, yeah, you get, you get your first course. And then, um, as you're eating your first course, then the show starts and Mm. then they keep serving you. Then they keep cramming food down the mouth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. Andy. And uh, Greg, I'll speak for you. You uh, after this, you're going right back into your hole to finish the rest of the series. <laughs> yes, he yes, is. I am. Yes, I yeah. Am. Where are we on that? Uh, uh, we... I have one script for you for the next episode. Woohoo! So we we have um, we have a total of four episodes, right? Huh? Don't we have four episodes of? We've we've recorded three for case two, mm-hmm. right? And you've right. given me one script. Okay, so we have, yeah, so we have, I have four. You have four finished scripts right, exactly. for case two. Right, and we just listened to one of them. So. Yes. You have, you have one finished script that we're recording in like okay. the next two weeks. Whatever. <laughs> it'll, it'll be, yeah, sure. We, All right, everyone, nice. thanks for listening to Riveting Conversations. <laughs> I am you. Joe. You can always find me on the internet. Uh, you can always go to my, <laughs> just, whoa, just, that sounds wow, weird. I'm going to do that again. Uh, um... <laughs> Greg uses women, and I and I am always on the internet. Swipe stage right. Thanks for listening to Ribbon Conversation. My name is Joe. Uh, you can always find me at my other podcast, uh, Fright School. We are working very hard to finish out the this particular semester of Fright School and to bring you more things. Which um, is hilarious. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. 
um, complete departure from things that I normally do, for right. sure. Um, and in the next few weeks, in April, my first and personal podcast, The Untitled Friendship Project, will be coming back for season two. Yay. I'm lining up the guests for that. It should be a lot of fun. And uh, that's it. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. Goodbye, everybody. sound engineer when you smack next to the microphone that's my favorite. isn't it the best of like yeah, wait it's coming let's not do that okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah you could, you could do that that's, that's i do fun. that i don't see this doesn't have to be